guys it's me riding with Sam here and as you can see here this is not my usual rate bike I'm having right now it's my friend Sawan 5 Damn this bike is smooth So the R5 I have to say it's a fucking smooth bike It's The way the bike moves man it's, It has a very premium feeling to it Compared to my CBR Everything it's so Smooth It's unreal It's like the bike Kind of Give you The power in Percentage Not like the CBR does it's more like um, let me give you a 10%, 20%, you no know, 30%. Hey, wait, wait, wait! Don't go too fast, you know. The way the power is delivered is fucking smooth. I was pretty shocked, man. That the power delivery was so smooth. I tried going down to gear six and um, accelerating it from 40 kilometers per hour, which my CBR cannot do. It will start jerking like hell because it wants you to change gear. But the but the young Maha R15 just you know just it's just so forgiving. So the R15, as you can see here, it's very forgiving in the power. If I were to just look at how the bike doesn't jerk, <laughs> twisting the throttle doesn't do anything. It doesn't jerk the bike forward, and this is fucking full throttle. That's how smooth the bike is. If you were to be on a CBR, it's gonna I mean pull you back. This bike is so fucking smooth. Doesn't jerk at all. And the engine braking on this is so good. Good in a way that it doesn't pull you back so much. It's really that smooth. So this bike is so smooth. There's no need to rev match. I would say at all. I mean normally when I hit a turn on the CBR, I would have to brake down gear rev match before going out because if i were to not down gear and turn with a very low speed the bike will start um how does i will put it in terms start making a lot of noise that the bike is telling you to quickly change to a lower gear but for the c for the r15 on gear six i can go slow and i can start accelerating up from there so there's actually no need to rev match at all or do it change gear. You know, it's almost like a scooter, man. The R15 is almost like a scooter. It doesn't need to change gear. It's a very simple bike to ride. So when my TBR were to hit below 3000, the bike will start making a lot of funny noises. It wants you to change the gear. <laughs> but for this bike, I can go at go at the uh, 2000, it, it still feels as smooth as as my CBR on the right gear, man. That's how smooth this bike is. The acceleration on this bike, it's really forgiving as well because it's, it doesn't pull you back at all. It's very linear in a way. It's like the bike is on some traction control shit, man. It, it doesn't pull. And the ergonomics of this bike, I would say it's... It's... Uh, pretty uncomfortable I mean um, for the clip-ons to be so fucking low I mean for the handlebars to be so fucking low there's not really a, a huge enough tank for you to actually lean on the tank and most of the weight it's on your wrist but for my CBR I can actually rest my body on the tank this one the tank is so low it doesn't make I don't know it's just really uncomfortable after a long ride you don't have to fucking change gear at 40 man, that's surprisingly smooth And the bike makes the sound like it's a car 
There's this. That's why I say it really has that very premium feeling to it. It's so smooth. You know what? I should really take this for a spin at uh, Devil's Bend, man. It feels like it can go really look way down. <laughs> Just kidding, but I'm not going to do that. It's not my bike. Every time I go to Devil's Bend or some Buna Vista Road, I'm like ready for my bike to just drop. Of course, I'm not like I want the bike to drop, but I'm just ready for it, no? I'm mentally prepared to drop, but I will not want to drop. I try not to drop, but I'm mentally prepared. So if I drop, I'm not going to blame anyone or going to regret it, but... That's me! It is gear 6. That's how smooth the bike is. Look at that. If I were to trotter from here... My god, talk about smooth bike, man. Nothing beats this. Ah, fuck! There's no need to down gear. What is down gearing, man? Why do you need a down gear? Just brake. Just brake. And just turn. Down gear, why is. <laughs> Why do you need a down gear on the bike? Gear 6 all the way, bruh! <laughs> but my Seba will be crying for help, man. If I were to just... Um, gear 6 at 50. What a kind bike. What a kind bike. Engine braking is smooth. Everything is smooth. Everything on this bike is smooth. So smooth, smooth, smooth. So smooth, it doesn't make sense anymore. And it wanna tilt like crazy. Honestly, I can say that this bike is really, really good. Other than some minor issues I have with this bike, but um, the issue would probably be due to the age of the bike. I'm not too sure how old, but it's not brand new. The gear shifter feels a bit clunky, at, but most of the time it's okay, but like I say, it's clunky. At, this bike, during turns, it kind of just want to lean over. Once you lean it, it feels like it's going to lean way more and it's pretty pretty nerve-wracking at times but I'm pretty used to it because I myself do love to ride the twisties if there is it. I mean, in Singapore there's not much but I do like to go way down at times so to me it's pretty normal so maybe I can give you the guys like a overall review of a now I'm fine I mean I wouldn't say I I wouldn't say I've known the bike very well but I think it's good to say that I I've experienced enough to give a uh, overall review because I've been riding the bike for two or three days now so let's get on with the performance of the bike first uh, I wouldn't talk much about accel acceleration because it's it's a 150cc bike, it's a 150cc bike and it's it's pretty much the same throughout all the bikes in the 150cc class unless you're talking about a 200cc which is the Duke the KTM bikes or the Balsa it's they are much faster but for 150cc bike comparing it to a CBR 150, 150R I think it's pretty much the same but one thing about this bike, it's the range of each gear. Every gear has more freedom to to accelerate or decelerate. Uh, that's why, I, hence I say that the bike is pretty smooth. It's so smooth that you might actually fall asleep riding this bike. There's hardly any vibrations in the bike. Even at the lower RPMs or the higher RPMs, it's just so steady and calm and smooth. It's, it's going to be a good bike for beginner riders who is afraid to tackle those corners at speed because this bike doesn't pull so every time you pull the throttle you are in safe hands to know that you will not spin out at the back so you will maintain constant traction I haven't really uh, go pull out on the top speed on, on this bike because it's my friend's bike I wouldn't talk about the brakes either because the brake is quite inconsistent when I press the pressure it kind of jerk uh, that might be due to the brake disc problem, but not the bike's problem, so I will go in touch on this. The clutch itself, 
uh, can be adjusted but like I say it's not maybe it's not the bike problem it's just uh, the age of the bike so that's that's all I like to say about performance it's number one it's very smooth number two it doesn't pull and the engine braking itself is also very minimum so all these contribute to a very smooth steady ride now let's go and talk about the shitty part about this bike um, the ergonomics of this bike is terrible I think it's terrible if you're a tall guy don't get this bike the handlebars are very low all sport bike does but the problem with this is the tag itself doesn't doesn't accommodate the how low the handlebars are it's like if I were to try to rest my body on the tank it's gonna be very very low and very very weird because the tank is so small there's not much physical contact when I'm riding on my body with the tank like there's no way it's just awkward to lean tank is just way too low compared to the CVR which is more comfortable of course um, the controls on this bike is awesome firstly you got a kill switch which is good but I'm really happy with the fact that you have this dedicated button here for the high beam at least you can just press it for the high beam I, I, <laughs> I love that that option to be able to just press it and just go like this for this bike you have the high beam but it's it's a flick motion here very fast but there's also the option of just pressing this so in a way that acts as a temporary high beam to warn other people which is good and that's all I'll say about the controls on the handlebars this this button here really help I'm really happy with this button here it's really intuitive to just press it got a kill switch of course my CBR doesn't have it <laughs> talk about something I'm not too sure whether it's stock or is it uh, modified but the suspension on this bike itself it's very very stiff it's very very stiff I'm not I mean my butt hurts when I ride through the, the, the straps you know, the straps that prevents you from speeding going going past the stripes here in my CBR I don't feel shit but going through with this bike here itself it's it's really really painful for both the pillar at the back and for me the suspension on this bike it's very very stiff it's gonna be good if you are going at high speed or just going for corners and stuff because it's very very stable but for those all these humps and bumps oh your butt hurts man and to add the seat of this bike it's very very hard I'm starting to ache on my on my ass the tank itself even though it's small it's very nice to grip because like I say the sides here are pretty lean for the tank and it's easier for me to grip the tank when I'm going through corners and it's it feels great other than that both of the ergonomics on the bike I don't really like because it's very uncomfortable if you are very tall if you are at least one eight try to get another bike this bike is not for you if you are one eight zero cm I mean then my back is beginning to ache right now as I'm talking because that's that's the bike <laughs> comparing my bike and this bike I would say each of the bike got his own pros and cons and if I were to choose you know I would prefer the CBR over the Yamaha because of uh, one simple reason um, the CBR is way more comfortable that it's one good reason to go for the CBR um, the, the Yamaha would be fun if you you know take it out for a fun ride you know hit the corners and shit because the bike is so smooth but as a daily thing you know you start to get sick of how hard the seat is the suspension as well you know everything is so bumpy but it's a fun bike uh, don't don't think this bike is boring or it's not good it's a good bike it's a fun bike but for me I prefer comfort over over anything else because to feel comfortable 
you don't feel like you no know, if you're comfortable on a bike you just want to keep riding it it doesn't it doesn't become like a like a chore to do it you know so I prioritize comfort over over how smooth the bike is because the CBR might not be too smooth on the trotter but if you get used to it you know learn how to control that trotter of that CBR 150 I think it's manageable so if you guys have any quick question that you would like me to you know just try it out on this bike comment and I'll see what I can do but uh, don't ask me to do a wheelie because I cannot do it <laughs> But if there's any question you might want to ask about the bike, I might do another video on it. But for now, that's all guys and I hope you enjoyed the video. r one is a good bike, but it's not as comfortable as the CBR. Goodbye. Thank you. Oh, the bump, the bump, the bump sucks.